And in verse 40, we see that all of this, all of these pieces of furniture are, again, it's repeated, a pattern. Now you remember, just as he says here, look that thou make them. He's saying, be careful. There's a purpose behind what I'm doing here. One of the biggest problems you ever have when you get groups together. Amen, Jenny. Jenny just went through a little thing with her college where there's a group project. And if everybody doesn't do what they're supposed to do, everybody, even the ones who do what they're supposed to do, everybody ends up with a headache. And the whole purpose is lost. And then you frantically at the end try to get everything together. Well, you remember Moses was told specifically to speak to the rock. What did he do? He totally destroyed the picture that he was to bring forth water and that it wasn't by works. And God said, you didn't obey me. And if you read that and you don't understand the importance of the picture, you think, God's got a short fuse there. You know, they got water, what's the big deal? Because God had an eternal purpose in that event. And Moses just stomped all over it. What drove him to do that? Simply righteous anger. He was not wrong in being angry. And God never said you were wrong for being angry. But his response was, so in the pattern of the temple, he was emphasizing, I've got a reason why I want everything to look the way it does. Now, in the New Testament, we've got something that is so wonderful. It's called the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, the early church, we've talked about it so many times, but we lose sight of the fact that those early churches, the church at Corinth and the church in Rome, and all them, they didn't have a New Testament. They were getting the New Testament hot off the press. Mm -hmm. One book at a time. One here, a few years later another one. They'd swap books. We have this complete revelation in front of us. Now go over to the book of Hebrews because in Hebrews, that is where you find so much help in having a full revelation of the tabernacle. In Hebrews chapter 8, and kids, this is a highlight verse. <laughs> so get your little highlighter out in verse 5. Paul, I believe, wrote Hebrews. And you'll hear some people debate that. I don't think there's any debate. But anyway, in, in verse 5 here, Paul is going to quote what we just read in Exodus 25.40. And beginning in verse 5, look what he says. Uh, he says, Who serve... He's talking about the, the high priest and the tabernacle. Verse 5, Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. That's the same as the word type. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So Paul is making it clear that that's why God was saying, be careful you do exactly what I tell you. Because this is a pattern. But not just a pattern he made up. This is a pattern of what's in heaven. Imagine that. Think about that. God was giving him the pattern of what's in heaven. And it's to picture what we see. Just turn back a few pages into Hebrews chapter 2. And all this is to picture Jesus. And in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, he starts out the book by pointing to all these things toward Jesus. And he says in verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that He by the grace of God should taste death for every man. We talked about in John chapter 1 how that it says He dwelt among us and that refers to tabernacle and that He tabernacled among us. That was just to say that's what He is. He is the human, divine, God-man tabernacle on the earth who came to die for the sins of the world. And we're, we're, we're called hate mongers and all kinds of things because we accept that and we want other people to know it before it's too late that Jesus is the only heavenly tabernacle that came to dwell among men. 
He's the only blood sacrifice that could pay for the sins of the world and did. We don't hate the Muslims. We're trying, we're trying to love them. We're trying to say, listen, Muhammad died, was buried, and remains. And the Buddhist. A lot of people say, well, I've practiced Tao and this and that, and it's helped me. Well, fine, but it's not going to help you when it comes to your sin problem. It may make you feel better and get rid of a headache or you know, relieve some stress. It's still not going to help you come judgment day. You've got a sin problem. And we're not hating people. We're trying to love them and say, listen, God Himself came to this earth and took your place and died and paid for your sins and the sins, says, for every man. Be sure to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find the latest video messages posted on the front page and links to free downloads of our messages in MP3 format. That's kjvbiblebelievers.com. This program is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship. Thank you for listening.